Rob Smith from gliding high in the sky at the early part of his working life in the airline business. He's certainly been an exciting few years from winning the BBC Big Allotment Challenge. He's now a veritable globe tropping veg hunter, although never happier than on his new plot and his hometown of Sheffield. He is now more used to working below ground level, introducing us to the wonderful world of heritage vegetables and how allotments should be a harmonious mix of veg, flowers, wildlife, quite simply, anything else you want to grow on your pad. I was thinking, you're, you're actually still the um, reigning big allotment challenge. Winner, I will be for, forever more known as. Will be, because I don't think they're going <laughs> to be no more. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to be done. I mean, it's a shame, but I don't yeah. think it'll ever be done again. No, we were talking about this the other, uh, the other day because um, when I was um, doing some other filming with someone else, they were saying, how long was it? And it was just such a long process for a TV programme. Yeah, God. Yeah. Um, because it's a growing season, they could film, like they filmed the entire uh, Bake Off within six weeks, whereas we were filming for six to seven months. Yeah. So it's a, there's a big, big difference and the cost of it all and everything is, is massive. Yeah, because was am I right in thinking it was based not far from me? I'm, I'm. It was it Reading? It was in somewhere near Reading. It was uh, Maple Durham. Yeah. Yes. Maple Durham. So it's yeah, not that far um, from you at all. Yeah. I did want to. I did <clears throat> was going to enter it, except I, yeah. the exclusion was unfortunately since I left school I've been a gardener, and that was uh, one of the yeah. you weren't allowed to be a professional, which is fair enough. Which is yeah, fair enough. But no. you and uh, some of your competitors, about, as you say, you were on Arika's still about, and um, I think Tony's. Part of kitchen garden. Yeah, Tony's the. I think yeah, he's the, one of the writers right. for that. Yeah, you've used it as a good launch pad. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been, it's been good. It was it. Was it four years ago? Five. It was five, two thousand fifteen. Yeah, and you're only yeah. still only twenty one, Rob. So I know, I just it's, uh, I dye it this colour, my hair. It's the look people want nowadays, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> exactly. It Platinum blonde. Yeah. Do you have any great memories from it? Because I say you were working with, uh, I mean, you obviously had the lovely firm Britain was there, but you're, uh, someone like Jim Buttress, it must be great to um, see him as such. Yeah, it was. It, personal. it was quite it's quite funny with them, to be honest, because I remember one day we were we were supposed to be, um, it wasn't judging, but Jim was supposed to be coming around and uh, what, like having a look around the plots and everything as he used to. And um, they came around and said, oh, we're going to um, delay it a bit because we can't find Jim. He'd gone around the other side of the house by, because Maple Durham's just near the Thames, mm. and he'd um, laid, down, laid down on a chair, took his watch off, put it on his chest and fallen asleep on this, uh, on this bench. Okay. And they had to send someone to go and find him. <laughs> that's, that's, that's when you live in the life, that is. That's what you can exactly. do. Exactly. You yeah. just go to sleep. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so, no, it's it, it a wonderful thing to watch. Shame it won't be back on, but yeah, these things happen, as you say, with um, television, time is money. Quite exactly, yeah. 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 But no, that's, that's excellent. Um, right, you've moved on quite a because I noticed you're on Channel 4 now. You're not just a, uh, a social media superstar, you're on <laughs> Channel 4s now as well. You're the um, resident go to gardener. Yeah, for um, I, I I do that on um, the Steph show. That's uh, it, yeah. So Steph, Steph's packed lunch um, at it. lunchtime. So yeah, I've, I've been up there a few times, and they've come down here uh, to film and see how how you do stuff and what you're supposed to do in the garden as well. Because yeah. I guess it's quite difficult. They're based in Leeds docks, so unless it's something you can do on a table yeah. or like uh, in a small area, it's really difficult to show what you'd actually do in a garden. Hmm. So it's fine if you've got a window box or house plants or anything, but that's why they came down here to film as well. I was going to say, I think they, they do house plants with um, Michael Perry, don't they? Yeah. Another yeah. one of my On the Grapevine. I'm not, I'm not trying to draw a conclusion here, but you come on On the Grapevine <laughs> and you get yourself a, a spot on Channel 4. But yes, yeah, so I think he does the indoor plant, which is more yeah, than a thing. I think he's only just got a garden, which would yeah. obviously collect. But, um, yeah, because obviously... Um, since I first spoke to you, you were having to go down the allotment, and then is it been a big? I mean, you've obviously got your lovely new allotment now, and I've seen the pictures; it looks wonderful. Has it been a, been a big yeah. change moving from the allotment? I mean, obviously, growing is slightly different, but suddenly being your own and it's out outside your back door to a certain extent, and and the people, because obviously you're now I, a little bit more solitary. Yeah, I think there's pros and cons. Um, to it so i ended up moving from the allotment because i had i started off with one then had one and a half then two yeah. um allotments and um after i'd won the big allotment challenge and stuff it got a little bit difficult because it got vandalized a couple of times i remember the shed got broken it, yeah. into uh, 
someone came and they, they ruined all the crops. Mm -hmm. uh, like they'd pick them up and throw them around, stuff like that. So it, it got to a stage where you didn't want to leave anything there, even though the shed was locked. Um, you didn't, it, it took forever to fill the car with all your good spades and everything and take them to the allotment. Um, and it got to the stage where we were looking at moving house anyway. So we yeah. ended up looking for a house, looking for the land that the house had rather than the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So got this house uh, and the house just needed totally redoing. It was not back to four walls. So while we were doing the garden, we were also doing the house. Um, and yeah, it, it's a lot more solitary because I do, I do miss the people that I used to have a chat with on the allotment, but it's really good just being able to wander out the back door hmm. for half an hour at lunch and do a bit of weeding or just yeah. go and pick something pick something for your tea or like go and get a cauliflower or dig some potatoes up for your tea yeah. rather than have to think about it and then drive home and think, oh, bugger, I forgot yeah. to get those potatoes after all this. Carrots. yeah. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. And you're exactly the same as me because I'm in the process of moving and I had to give up. I gave it up in October because I thought give it to someone else, the subs are in. And as yeah. you say, it's that little bit. And, and sometimes you want to go and do, I've got 20 minutes, half an hour, I need to go and do that. And you found out you never did it because I was I was right at the bottom of the allotment. And yeah. you can guarantee that there'll be two or three people. Oh, it'd take you 20 minutes to get to your plot, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. Because you'd yeah. Be yeah. Chatting chatting everyone, and I know yeah. lovely. You said there was a big pot, yeah. actually, it's really nothing. So, yeah, yeah, the place we're moving to, I've got to start by a bit like you. I'm not as grand as yours, I happen to add. But I will be having <laughs> a little allotment off the side of the house. I've always wanted it. And yeah. it's often because I do this for a living, as in landscaping and gardening, some evenings you don't really want to go out, load up the van, drive down exactly. there, through the gate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Is, but, um, exactly. Getting out of yeah. the car, unlock the gates, and then getting yeah. back into when you've done it. And that I used to drive me up the wall, just just opening the gate and shutting it after me. And it's the smallest thing in the world, but it used to really wind me yeah. up. I must admit, I can't complain about that because the council actually um, fitted an automatic one. She pressed a little bleeper and it did it. Oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This is. I don't think they did it to us. It was next door to the football club, so I think they oh, did it right. more for them. But we kind of like. Took off of it, so um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice thing to have, shall we say? Is how we say. Yeah. So, um, you're doing your, I say, you're on the channel four. I, I worked out earlier, you, yeah. you've got over 55,000 followers on your um social media. So, you're, oh, right, okay. you're on, yeah, no, if you, if you combine your uh, Twitter and Instagram, yeah, you're, you're yeah. well over, um, which is very, very impressive. Did you ever think you'd get that sort of following? I don't think you, you sort of do. I remember because I started my, God, I started my Twitter years and years ago. Mm. And you just used to put your ramblings on, didn't, don't you really? Yeah. And, and I think it, because obviously with Kitchen Garden and um, Garden News and everything, now when I do the articles, I take the photos as well. Or my friend yeah. Darren takes the photos when we're allowed people around. Um, I, think, I think the better you get with the photos and phones have got better and how you take mm. photos, lure people in as well um yeah. to actually to actually comment on things as well so it's not just the musings inside my head sometimes it's actually actually I the photos know. as well i think ultimately that's what people, people um a customer told me years ago people buy people you can, yes. you can sell anything you want doesn't matter what the product is and yeah salesman for instance you might go in one in an iphone and they'll sell you an android for instance but people yeah. buy people it's the person they buy it's not necessarily the product it's the person yeah. i think that's obviously you're, you're an engaging chap, so I think people buy you. That's what they're buying. <laughs> Rob sings. So, yeah, and, 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 they, and they get buy one, get one free. They get Winston as well. Why? Well, how is <laughs> Winston? I see they've been getting a bit grumpy lately. Oh, he's always moody. Yeah. He always looks like that. He's he's just one of these dogs that looks so moody, but he's he's, he's a lovely little dog. He's always yeah. happy, but he's um, yeah, his, his resting face is uh, not happy, shall we say? What's well, going to say? Um, he's, he's must be. How old is he now? He must be. He's, 10 in May, yeah, but 10 in May. Ooh. Yeah, so we're looking at getting him a little friend um, as well. Nice. But um, we'll, we'll see how that goes in the yeah. new year. He might not like that, actually. <laughs> yeah, take it away from him. Competition, I believe, yes. <laughs> um, yes, I remember. But no, he loves the garden because obviously he used to love the allotment. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know how your allotment is, but mine used to have the, the, the lane up the side. And some yeah. of the people who used to have the allotments up the top. They used to come bombing up there, even though it's supposed to be five miles an hour. They'd be doing 30, 40 miles an hour and yeah. just go everywhere. And yeah. I was always paranoid he was going to get splattered. Um, yeah. Whereas now in the back garden, it's all enclosed in. So he, he's just wandering around with me all day. I see he vandalises your crops. You don't need any 
No, he does. Yeah, he digs. Yeah, yeah he, he he does the taste test. Definitely does the taste test on absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah, they just that yeah. game. That's fun. Yeah, it's, no, it's quite good them. though because you, you literally have what if it's above two feet, you're absolutely fine. But mm. from ground to two feet high, anything that's hanging there, like what do they say, low hanging fruit, that's he's it. just had it all. Yeah, he, yeah. he just has it. That's it because I always used to think because I grow my carrots and parsnips in the big two hundred and ten liter barrels. Yeah, like carrot fly. Except yeah. I didn't realise it's only this year. Um, some deer got in, and they stripped oh. it. I came in one morning and thought, who's neatly cut off, beautifully cut off, about two inches tall, all my carrots and parsnips. And I oh, couldn't what, just eating all the tops off them all. Yeah, basically, it just nibbled. Oh. Them. I mean, they all came back and they've all been fine. But yeah, it was. Yeah. I came in one day thinking, oh, is that so I've yeah. a giant rabbit? Kind of like four foot tall, or say, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it can jump quite like, high. It, yeah, it was a little roe deer got in, and I'm gauging she was pregnant because we've seen the little kids, and because she moved on to the beans after that. It wasn't just me, yeah, moved on. So, um, but that was fun because I thought, mm, I don't really want to put a six foot deer fence around my lot. No, no, we well, we struggle with uh, squirrels, so we've got ah. we've got a resident squirrel that we've called Dave, um, yeah. and you know when Dave's about because Winston goes mental. He goes absolutely crazy running around the garden trying to get him. But you, you see the tiny little holes that are probably, yeah. what, about six, seven centimetres wide and a couple of centimetres deep. They're just digging everywhere, just trying to look for stuff. Yeah. Um, and they'll, they'll, come into, they'll come right down by the house and they go in the pots and they try and dig the bulbs out of the tulips and everything and eat them. So we've yeah. had to put big, thick layers of um, gravel on top of everything. Well, like, like pea gravel yeah. um, to try and stop them. They are. About, yeah, I've, I've got a cocker spaniel. Bella, she's always got a sad face, which makes people think that, oh, she hasn't been fed, she's been for water. Yeah, exactly. But, um, well, he's we've me. Got, we've got Gordon, <laughs> the garden squirrel. He may have oh, the same one, but um, yeah, he runs across the back, but she goes mad for him. But she'll never catch him, but she no. runs after him and, and barks at him, and he just looks kind of ambivalent from the tree, as if to say... Yeah, well, that's what that's what little Dave does. He'll sit on the yeah. fence, and because he's the six foot fence, he'll just sit there twitching his tail, staring at Winston while Winston's spinning round, going mental and barking. That's it. Yeah, might be the same yeah. squirrel. You never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Same attitude. Mental, they say. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I say, is, is Winston still got his Twitter account? Because he was in danger of overhauling you. Um, he has. It's not being used for. No. Quite a few years, shall I we? I think say. you shut it down, yeah. Rob, because you were worried. Because you're not yeah. people like with animals, they're far I know. more care far I know. more about know. Their animals. Yeah, and, yeah. and his agent gets quite fussy as well about well, um, yeah. different things and what's yeah, mentioned. I, I think I think you shut him down to. Oh, yeah. I'm the number one here, mate. <laughs> uh, Monty is that's the same problem as well with these dogs. They start taking over unless they come to the main thing. This is it. You just got to keep them under control. I know. Um, we we'll chat about your um because you're a big fan of heritage seeds, aren't you? And you're a seed yes. guardian. Yeah. Now they this I mean a seed guardian. Can you explain a bit more about that? Because people can get involved themselves a little bit with that, can't they? Yeah, so there's a there's a charity called uh, the uh, Garden Organic. So it's yep. the biggest organic charity in Europe. Um, and you can join Garden Organic and you get the tips and you get all their fact sheets and everything. So quite quite good, uh, all about yeah. organic and becoming more organic. Not saying that you have to do absolutely everything organic, but it's a journey on becoming yes. more organic. Um, and then you can go, uh, what you can do is you can become part of the Heritage Seed Library, which is part of Garden Organic. Um, and you obviously you pay for that towards the yeah. charity, you donate towards the charity, and they'll send you six packs of um, rare vegetable seeds for the year. So I think it's tomorrow, 1st of December, the list comes Ooh. out. Um, so with all the rare stuff, and yeah. it's all things that you can't buy in um, like shops, or you can't buy from seed companies. They're, they're old varieties that have either been dropped by the seed companies or have never been in the seed companies. So it might have been, I don't know, Auntie Ethel grew a bean mm. from some church for the last 300 years and it's a brilliant variety so they try and keep it going uh it's to stop these old vegetable varieties going extinct so they have those uh, and then one step further are the seed guardians there's about 180 of us in the country so we get the really rare veg we will grow it and then we send the seeds back uh, to the heritage seed library because if you think about it we're saving these seeds from going extinct, but if, you, if you've just grown them and you keep them for 10, 20 years, they're going to die. They're never going to grow. So you're constantly having to renew the seeds that are in the library, otherwise they're going to die. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we get the really rare ones and we'll grow them, take photos of them for, for Garden Organic, 
uh, maybe try them, uh, but not eat many of them, and then send send all the seeds back. Yeah, yeah. Because am I right in thinking? Because a lot of these seeds, if they drop off a seed catalogue and it's not carried by anyone, as you say, it literally it goes. Yeah, they can disappear. Can yeah. If they're not carrying it, it's yeah, gone. and it's, it's all going to get re. Yeah, it's all going to get really, really complicated from the first of um, January as well, because obviously, because we uh, with Brexit, instead uh, of using the European like catalog, in and Brexit, that's the first. Name oh. <laughs> <laughs> but with the, with the European seed catalog, yeah. obviously, we used to be able to anything that was on that catalog, we used hmm. to be able to sell in the UK, uh, and now we won't be part of. EU, yeah. we have to go from the national listing which is a, an well not English sorry a British one a UK based one uh, so if, if things aren't listed in that they shouldn't be for sale so yeah, yeah. Because, it could it could be complicated yeah yeah do you think um I mean there's lots of things with garden and nature obviously no one would want to be in a prime minister as such do you think enough's being done for because obviously farmers are very much subsidized by the EU and all this is going to Maybe vanish, maybe not. The problem is, there's all lots of small talk or um, in the fine detail. And do you think things like that on that front is that, that people maybe don't think about it? They just think, oh, I'll order my seeds from whoever. And actually, they've got, actually got to think about that these things might become a lot more difficult or the quality might drop, for instance. I think a lot of things will um, become more expensive. Mm. Um, simply because there are more tests and checks and tick boxes and things to get things into the country, uh, yep. especially with uh, plants as well. So there's all yep. the plant passports in, there's the phytosanitary certificates and everything that needs to be completed. Um, and if there are, you, you imagine if there are delays and things at ports. Now, if you've got plants plants in a lorry for five days stuck at Calais, what's it going to be like when they open that van back up? I don't want to think so. About it, yeah. Yeah. So, so actually, getting things in to the country is going to be difficult. Um, all these extra things, like plant passports or the, the the new way of doing things and the new certificates that are needed, all cost money. Yeah. All these companies are going to need somebody to do that paperwork, so they're going to have to pay for their time. So, I, I think I think we could see things going up in price just yeah. simply for um, for what's happening. So, it, it, yeah, if you can get things that are say grown in the UK. Yeah. Um, or, or produced in the UK, it's going to be easier because it's not as if, I don't know, let's say you're in Reading, I'm in Yorkshire. There's not, well, at the moment, there's not yeah. going to be a border between the two of us to, to stop a lorry and, and check the paperwork. Whereas coming from wherever in Europe, there is going to be now. Like I say, do you think it's, a, it's an opportunity? I mean, unfortunately, things like seeds, is it's not a thing you can go, oh, I think I'll sell some of those. It, it's going to take you a bit like a, a planting trees for truffles or something like that or having a christmas tree farm you unfortunately you need to be thinking five ten fifty years yeah it's not an instant thing could you think it's an opportunity for a as i say there is a uh, there's a bit in the press at the moment that certain bigger companies are buying up certain not necessarily small companies but the yeah <laughs> kind of breadth, i mean it's, i'm not going to say any names but yeah there are some big seed companies buying up yeah. some smaller versions of them and yeah. some people are happy, but a lot of people are like, oh, I quite like that, because it was a bit like, oh, I felt like more of a local company, even if it's not yeah. local, huge, I'm more of a cottagey type industry, but part of yeah. that, unfortunately, just is life. Big companies yeah. buy smaller companies, that's what they do, unfortunately. Yeah. And um, as you say, but do you think there is that opportunity out there for someone if they thought about it, or maybe a collective of people to kind of get together? I mean, I know Gordon, uh, Gardner, um, Gardner Organic, because I think their actual base is, pretty close to me in Chertsey, if I'm right. The, well, they used to be they used to be based at Brighton Gardens, hmm. um, but I think that I think is it University of Warwick are now buying oh, buying no. that site, um, um, and they they are they they I don't know how they're restructuring, but yeah. the gardens are being bought for certain bits. They're trying to concentrate on a more national scale rather than just concentrate all their efforts on Brighton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, cause I think they're a very good company to buy seed from. Anyway, because a lot of people, as you say, want want the organic seed, and you need a company like that to do it. Without being rude, some larger companies will say yeah. a bit like the. Um, I suppose you go into a supermarket. You've only got their word that it's organic, and then you kind of yeah. sit there and wonder sometimes how organic is something that's been grown in Kenya or something. Well, when you when you when you think about it, though, you have got for especially for organic seeds and organic plants, mm. there is trackable uh, certification mm. for everything. Yeah. Uh, so in the UK, obviously, you've got uh, the Soil Association or yeah. OF&G, which is Organic Farmers and Growers. 
Uh, so that's certified, and you've got to be certified by them. Yeah. You can't just put that sticker on, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then in Europe, you get the bio leaf. So if you've ever seen a pack of seeds or anything with a little green leaf that's got the, yeah, the yeah, European yeah. star circle, that's their oh. certification. So that's all legally bound, so it has to be yeah. organic. So there, there, there are ways of tracking it, but I know what you mean about um, how it will work with uh, different companies, shall we say. Yeah. So there are, there are a lot of smaller ones that are really good uh, and based in the UK as well, and you can find them. Um, and another thing to do, though, is don't forget, if you've bought seed and you've enjoyed the vegetables you're growing, as yeah. long as it's not an F1, why not save your own seed? It's the easiest thing yeah. in the world. You've just come with what I, I write about, I've written about that, the, um, how what you buy in a supermarket or a green grocery yeah. necessarily isn't the best. They, have, they buy it because they look nice on the shelf, does it store well, does it travel exactly. well? Whereas actually, exactly. Whereas there's older vegetables out there that maybe don't store very well, or don't travel very well, but they might yeah. have twice the flavour, but they yeah. just don't do what a, su- a supermarket requires a lot different to me or you growing in our gardens. And that, yeah, that's the thing. A supermarket will go for, the, I don't know, let's take cauliflowers. They want them all to grow as quick as they can. They want to be able to harvest them all at the same time. They want them all to be uh, nice and uh, the leaves quite tight to cover the curds so that it protects it from the weather. Whereas for a gardener, I don't want all my cauliflowers to be ready within a week. My God, can you imagine the smell of the house? Um, so well, yeah. <laughs> same with cabbages. I remember when I got my allotment ooh, back when I was... 16 so 30 odd yeah. years ago i'll give me age away and they i put raised beds in and they were you yeah. well, my old son is it is it stamp collecting next year type thing and yeah. i remember they used to grow rows like a row of 50 cabbages and they give most yeah. of them away and i think part of it is you're growing it because you enjoy it which is absolutely fine yeah. it's a hobby to a lot of yeah. people but you did used to sit there and think there was no that kind of like do a little bit do a little run of five do another five in two weeks time they were very much the old-fashioned sort of ways. Oh, no, we all sow them at the same time and do them. And then you're kind of like, but, but you're growing it for everyone else. Or a lot of them, to be honest, I know it's ended up on the compost bin. Yeah, plowed back in. How many cabbages or cauliflowers in a, in a life? But the, best, but the best thing to do is, like you say, you either do it successionally, you do it a few now and again, or when you're looking at these varieties, look for uh, anything that says it stands well. Because if it stands well, it means it's not going to split, it's not going to blow as quick. So, yeah, you might start harvesting your cauliflowers, but if they'll stay in your bed for two months without discolouring or starting to flower, that's perfect because then you can grow more of them at once. Um, And what works for you and what you like is the thing to grow and the thing to save. So it's like... Yeah, they're local things as well. You cut just because you're growing compared to mine a world away. I, I probably get a longer summer although this yeah. summer's been pretty exceptional. But yes, and I, and I think that's the thing is you take guidance from people on, in yeah. books, and as you say, you read on media, but what you've got to do is always adapt something to your local growing conditions and what works well for you. Some people can't grow brassicas. No. I got sandy soil, so then it's not the best soil to grow brassicas yeah. on. Whereas yeah. then again, I can, go and, I can go and mow my lawn 10 minutes after it's been pouring the rain for 40 hours. Yeah. Turns and roundabouts. Yeah, as you say. Because there's another thing, do you, I've written about it before in like the little local bits I do, is this thing about organic, is, is the things built up around about it. I often think sometimes, yes, organic, but sometimes fresh and local is maybe better than organic that's travelled 2,000 miles to get to you. Strawberries are a classic example. They, you, they, you eat them often very much out of season because people yeah. want to. Where do you think the, the happy medium is? Because obviously I, I think fresh and local is the way forward. And, yeah, and I think I think I was going to say I think it is personal choice what people want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, because some people want to eat wholly organic because they don't want things sprayed with yep. certain bits and bobs or anything like that or treated in different ways. But just because they aren't certified organic doesn't mean that they they, they have been sprayed so it could be just somebody who doesn't want to pay the thousands of pounds to get organically certified but they grow organically or they grow biodynamically or they grow um, on a a certain certain way and yeah like you say if it's seasonal and it's local that's the best things you can go for Um, obviously if things are sprayed with God knows what. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not always the, the best way to, to go forward and the best way to eat. 
um, and I personally wouldn't myself, but that's all personal choice because that could be cheaper for uh, somebody who is on a lower income. And just because it has been spread doesn't necessarily mean those things are bad for you because otherwise they wouldn't be in our food chain. Well, so it depends what your, what your ethos is, how much money you've got, what you believe in, how quick it is or how easy it is for people. Yeah. Um, and the ultimate way is to actually try and grow as much as you can yourself mm. uh, with as little chemical inputs as you can and organically as you can and easily as you can um, and then go from there. That's, that's the ideal for me. That's what I try and do. Yeah. And if not, I try and eat seasonally and eat things that are produced locally. Yeah, because well, the other thing I think about when people often ask me, oh, you do that, is I can, I can buy things like carrots you can buy a kilo of carrots for a, a ridiculous and especially if you go to yeah the, like 39p or whatever can't yeah, you? The, Al, the aldis and the uh middles of the world for that, yeah. route, that kind of scaled down supermarket there's no it's just start like put on the shelf they yeah. can but i say to people it's, it's not about you don't necessarily save money because if you take into account your personal i mean no one ever takes into account their their own personal type yeah probably should do but it's not about that the, the part of it is it's not a money saving scheme it, it's the difference in varieties yes yeah. and obviously the goodness you'll get growing just do it even if you're doing something like a no dig thing you're still actually yeah. having to do quite a lot of work to keep on top yeah well it. just well, well just just think that no one in this country has to grow their own food to survive no. Um, it's not like it was during the Second World War where we had to try and supplement our diets and that's why we had all the allotments. So it is a choice to do it. Mm. Um, it, it gets you out, it gets you active, it, you actually start learning things and you know what you're doing. And I think if you become more invested and you're growing your food, uh, like let's take your carrots for example, you dig them up, well if they've got a little snail hole in them or a slug hole or they're a little bit warped or whatever, you chop that bit off. But if you bought them in a bag from a shop, you'd throw it all away. People would throw that one away. Uh, so you become more invested in what you're actually producing and you will eat more of it. So there's less food waste, I find, when you grow your own yeah. because you've put your blood, sweat and tears into it and you want to make the most of it. Yeah. And you, may, you also maybe take what you want. If you think I want five carrots to go with my Sunday lunch, as you say, instead of buying a bag of a kilo of them, or there yeah. might be some you think, oh, that cabbage or that cauliflower, oh, it's just perfect. Yeah. I love that. You change your mind. So that's your thing. Yeah, it, it's, it's a difficult, it is a difficult thing. But I mean, I've, I've always enjoyed it. I mean, I think, I mean, again, allotments are on there. I mean, certainly over this summer, we've had allotments have suddenly become, they seem to go in a boom and bust. I know we've chatted about this before, where they're, they're, yeah. they're a peak, they down. They dropped off a little bit, I think, from when I first spoke to you a few years ago. I mean, yeah. they've absolutely flown. Oh, they're, everybody's growing their, their own now. The seed sales are up, vegetable plant sales are up, anything to do with the garden is up. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is because of the, um, let's say, when, when we went into the first lockdown, if you notice, the things that became really popular mm. were the things that our grandparents used to do. Yeah. So it was gardening, it was sewing, it was baking, it was all these things that take a lot longer and aren't instant result, which we're yeah. used to. Instant gratification, instant gratification. We had the time to actually try something different, and so many people loved baking, sewing, starting their own garden, and it's yeah. carrying on now. So it sort of brought them back to what, again, our grandparents had to do it to supplement what they did. We don't. We're treating it more as a hobby, mm. but it's gone back to that slower pace of life rather than everything just having to be instant gratification well yeah you can't order a garden off amazon well not yet exactly not yet yeah it's going to be keeping hold of it's always got to be the younger generation yeah without being rude we're we're middle-aged generation to uh, in gardening terms but it's keeping hold of those i mean do you think something like i mean horticulture is not on any national curriculum that i know no of. i mean i know no. they have little garden clubs and i built them for my own children when they were much younger in, the, in their schools, but do you think it is something that could actually be on the curriculum? Because growing your own, you do start to realise you, you come more in nature with everything around you, the bees, all the insects, you suddenly realise that they're all, all connected, everything's connected. Yeah, it, it almost wants to be part of the sciences. Hmm. Um, because if you, if you imagine like all the, all the biology and everything classes that they do, well, how better a way than growing things in front of you to learn how things work, how things actually evolve, grow, 
um, and, and how the natural world works, but also to give a more round, should I say, rounded education? Because there are so many kids that say, I don't like potatoes, and they don't know a chip is a potato. No. They don't know a potato comes from under the ground. They think it grows on a tree or mm. just things like that that are, because they don't see it, they're not necessarily, and they've never experienced it, they don't really know. No, um, they don't know the basic thing, as you say. It's, it's exactly. It's that you think that they don't know what a potato is, but yeah. I would sit there in my mind and think that's, 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 that's mad. But you actually realise yeah. that they don't know what potatoes. They think McCain make these fabulous little things that you put in the oven. Exactly, and where'd you get where yeah, where'd you get chips from? The freezer. No, they're from potatoes. You grow them in the ground. No, they come in the freezer. And what different types do different I like fluffy potatoes for bacon. Oh see this is do you know what? This is one yeah. thing that I have told people about for years. So it's things like people just think there are potatoes, that's yeah. it. People just yeah. think there are onions, that's it. People think there are tomatoes and that's it. And there are so many different types that are used for a multitude of things, be it from a nice fluffy one for a roasty yep. to a really waxy one for a salad. And then when you're looking at your onions, you've got your brown onions for cooking, you've got your white sweet ones for eating raw, your red ones, your pink ones, your shallots. Yep. Tomatoes are the same. Everybody says, oh, they love little sweet little cherry oh, tomatoes. Like, yeah. they're, they're amazing in a salad. But you yeah. try and make a sauce out of it, it's so sweet and watery, it's disgusting because yeah. you need more of a flesh ratio. So you need the big cookers, but you wouldn't eat the big cookers raw because this, they're not very sweet and they're a bit insipid. No, they're so, quite, yeah, quite, yeah, they're, they're a thing to eat, as you say, yeah. Yeah, so there, there are different things within a species to be used for a different purpose. And um, I think that's, that's what even some gardeners don't understand as well when they're, when they're looking at different things. Yeah, it depends how they um, yeah, look at Yes, you've got to look at it a little bit deeper. I mean, I think that's part of the enjoyment of growing your own. You certainly Absolutely. realize that there is, there is, there is garlics. Well, there's hundreds of garlics. And some, yeah. some are soft necks, some are hot necks. Some people eat, yeah. a lot of people eat elephant garlics and go, well, that's the sort of garlic I like. It's not too garlicky. Yeah. There you go. But as you say, it's experimentation. As you say, I suppose that is the fun part of growing your own veggies, actually, looking and seeing all those things out there and, and, and I suppose it's trying exactly I think it's a thing and people don't always want to try they kind of that social thing that oh this is what kind of somebody says is the way forward well, yeah, well that's, that's 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 just what yeah there are so many people that will say what what should I grow I've got a new allotment yeah. what should I grow such and such is saying this on tv such and such says that on radio such and such says this in a magazine and it's like okay what do you eat? And people look at you gone out and you're yeah. like, they say, what do you mean? I say, well, what do you eat? What do you enjoy? And what do you cook with? That's what you should be growing. I don't, do you know, everyone's growing fantastically beautiful looking chard. If you don't like chard, why would you grow it? If it's going to take up a bed? Right. Yeah, exactly. Or if you've only got a tiny little raised garden, just because someone's telling you to grow potatoes, why would you grow potatoes? It's going to take the entire plot up. You might as well grow things like chilies or herbs or things that are smaller that have a big flavour, so you don't need to use a lot of them. So you get a lot of a lot worth of the vegetable yeah. out of a small space. Well, I think it's the same so to speak. You don't need an acre of garden to have a no. productive plot. I think they've, no. it's been proven that you could have a metre square, which isn't actually a massive piece of land, but if yeah. you if you work it well. You can actually have an amazing amount of different things, but it's, it's understanding when to. I mean, I think it's like a lot of things. It's understanding that lettuce are quick, radishes are quick, radishes can grow in, in between things and stuff like that. I mean, I know the um, yeah. the three bean system that people often talk about from, um, as you say, the uh, kind of like the South Americans people used to do. Oh, the three sisters. Three sisters. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're very. But you actually look at them and think, yeah, but they were very. They obviously came across this by handed down, but someone had to experiment. But the basis of it is is very clever. Yes, you grow yeah. the taller things, and as you say, it, it is it's about using the um using the soil. And it, I think the people need to understand also when we're talking about the biology of things is actually there's a lot of things in the soil you you can't see unless you've got a microscope that actually yeah. is as important as what you can. Uh, the bees and all insects, wasps are as important as bees in many ways, they all pollinate. But yeah, everything those, starts with the soil. Yeah, is there, there are things in the soil, because are you a no digger or are you a, what sort of... No, I'm a, I'm a, I must admit, I'm sort of like halfway in between, so on the allotment I used to dig, 
Yeah. Um, and I used to dig because I enjoyed it as well. I, I, it was a, there were certain things that you did at certain times of year and I used to actually enjoy that. Um, and then now, because I've got raised beds, it's a bit easier because I don't have to um, do as much. So I can yeah. dig just to get things up, but then I just put manure and yeah. compost and stuff on top. And I ask everyone this, what is your favourite, what's your favourite season, Rob? Um... Oh, do you know what? That's really difficult because... If you've got on a vegetable, in a garden, maybe they've got a bit more, but on vegetables, there, there is something all year going on. And some that's the, really yeah, that's the thing with, 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 with veg growing all year round. You can grow stuff all year round, but I love, I love harvesting. Who doesn't? Because yeah. that means you get to eat it. Um, I love um, autumn because you, you get to start preparing stuff. So if things need fixing, it becomes a bit more DIY season, isn't it? It's when the shed needs fixing or when a pane's blown out in your greenhouse or something like that. So it gets a bit more um, buildery type type of uh, season. Mm. And then spring as well, when you start sowing the seeds, I think that's absolutely amazing. It's the first seed that comes up of the year and it's normally a chilli or an onion if you're growing the exhibition onions. And it's just that yeah. first little green Little, little hook coming through the soil yeah, and you just think oh do you know what here we go this is going to be um, a good season and it's going to be yeah. full on I think that's an exciting thing for kids when they grow let's say at um, uh, primary school is yeah. things like when they ask me what I said well carrots and things like that brilliant they yeah. don't need that much looking after really um, yeah. but when that little thing comes up and as you say the fact we, we did some colourful ones one year all the different colours you can get because it's a bit like carrots they're not always, well, they never were orange a long time. No, ago. no, you've got the white, the purple, yeah. the yellow, and the this red. Year I, dug up, I grew some of your ox, I mean, you recommended ox heart ones a few years ago. The fat like, ones. Yeah, oh my Lord, yeah. I pulled up, they look like little grenades, to be honest. They're very, <laughs> they're very tasty, they're, they're a big old lump, no, they're not very deep. Yeah, no. Uh, they're a lovely tasting carrot as well. As yeah, and they, 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 they seem to be quite um, carrot fly resistant as well compared yeah. to some. So they're not bred for it because obviously they're a heritage variety, but yeah. they seem to ignore them more, shall we say. And I think that's because they don't have as much foliage as a lot mm. of carrots. So when you get the size of the carrot you pull up with the amount of leaves you get on it, you think, oh, blimey, that's massive compared yeah. to what you thought it was going to be. Yeah, because I never realised about carrots. I um, I asked our old friend Terry Walton about that, and he actually doesn't water them once they get past two inches. And oh, I really? never knew that. No, his, his yeah. advice was stop watering at two inches, otherwise all you get is loads of green fluffy foliage. Yeah. It's, not, it's the same principle that if you, um, if you keep watering it, it's not going to go looking for water because it's going to go from there. Yeah, it's true. Beautiful. But um, Yeah, no, because yeah, I asked him a hint about that. And um, yeah, he said, yeah, he, he doesn't water them. I mean, obviously, the, um, you can't stop rain getting on them. But he, yeah. never t he never gives them extra water once they get past two inches. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Yeah, because I, I wonder sometimes where these her heritage varieties Actually, they've been, they're still going, but actually, I think people forget their properties they can add. Years ago, people yeah. didn't have micro fleets and think all the no. wonderful things we can do. Yeah. They just did them. Now, as you say, whether these things, the carrot fly has evolved and it's forgotten how to attack some of these things, I doubt it, but I'm sure it'll soon get back on try. But it's very interesting on things like that. And the way different people yeah. do different things. And um, yeah. I think that's the wonder of it. What works for one person? doesn't for the next. I mean, the no. last thing I'll say, there's one good thing about maybe not having an, an allotment on a site is unfortunately, if someone gets, for instance, blight at the top or the bottom, you oh, can't work its way across, yeah. It will, and if they get a pest, all they generally do on allotments is you move the pest off to someone else. Someone, a bit like the, um, the deer I was talking about. Basically, he, moved, he ate all my stuff and then moved on to the next person. So you could actually <laughs> kind of see where it moved up. So I suppose one advantage of, as you say, growing on your own little patch is you may miss some of these terrible little pests because they may just not spot your little patch. Yeah, you no, that's, 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 true. that's true. Decimated, yeah, that's true. But if they do, yeah, if they do notice it, there's nowhere else to go. Yeah, so. <laughs> this is it. But no, I will look forward to watching your garden as it evolves, um, Rob, because it's yeah. lovely what you've been doing. I mean, it must just be very nice to have and actually invest in it because you know it's not that you're going to be moving allotments in a few years. It is your Exactly, yeah. Quite enjoying it. And I think it comes across because you're obviously a, you're quite a flower grower as well, aren't you? To be fair. You mix yeah, do, do you know what? Well. I never used to be, I never used to grow a lot of flowers, but because the new garden is on a slope, the only mm -hmm. way to, to grow on it vegetable wise was to tier it. So yeah. obviously, there's a, there's, a, there's a sloping level in between each tier. 
Now, I didn't want to start trying to grow veg on that because how do you put fleece or mesh over it or how do you water it without it all rolling down the hill? Yeah. Um, so I thought, well, the, the, the in-between slopes can be the flower borders just yeah. to try and drag all the insects in. Um, and when you actually see how big they are, because they're probably two metres wide by, I think it's about 40 metres long each, and there are three of them. That's so um, it's yeah. a, heck of a, lot of, um, a heck of a lot of flowers that go in it. Yeah. The thing is, if you didn't, though, that's a heck of a lot of weed. Exactly. Yeah. Or a lot of fun yeah. mowing. Yeah, That'd and it does look, and it does when it's in the in summer when it when everything's starting to bloom, yeah. it looks stunning and it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for the world now, but yeah, at first it was um, interesting learning about all the new shrubs and the flowers and stuff. Yeah, but I think again that's part of it, but it adds to it. I think you need you need the mix. So, I was gonna say I can remember my own granddad because I know that's who got, kind of got you into gardening, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, my granddad. Yeah, yeah. I can remember my granddad. They used to go. I mean, they love granddad chrysanthemums and things. Now whether they're your cup yeah. of tea, but. It wasn't just a vegetable plot. It was a vegetable plot, flower plot. They didn't go down the shop and sell. I saw these at Tesco's. Yeah. Other brands available. But you get my meaning. Whereas they were, yeah. Yeah, we, we're growing them. And, and yeah, you didn't get as many flowers in the winter because you just didn't. It's summertime. No. It's, it's a summer. No, that was, you, you only got what you grew. Yeah. And may, maybe it's something we need to get back to a little bit. But probably not. Consumerism takes over everything, unfortunately. And yeah. Fact of life. But thank you very much for coming on this, um, Rob. And um, You're very as welcome. I say, I, I have no idea what, how it's going to appear on Kitchen Garden, but it was an idea <laughs> of Steve's because he said, I've done an interview with you, but you're in there all the time. So maybe didn't think it would work as well. Yeah. You're in there. So it is his idea. No, I've quite enjoyed it. So I'll Why not? Yeah, it's been, it's been good fun. It might yeah. be, um, people might um, like the ramblings of um, two gardeners. Oh, yeah. You never know. This time next year. <laughs> Rodney. Rodney. Do you want to be Rodney or do you want to be, a, it's up to you. you can be I think I'm more Albert. like Uncle Albert. Yeah, you can be Uncle Albert, yeah. To be honest, we've both got the grey bits. Exactly. I reckon we're of a similar yeah. age, to be honest. Yeah, no, I, I, well, I've still got some hair left, but yeah, but mine, mine, mine hasn't gone so grey. Although saying that, I'll look at a picture sometimes and think, I didn't realise my hair was that grey, but it's, it's, the, uh, it's the on vogue thing to have nowadays. Um, exactly. It's pepper, don't they? You can't pay for it. Yeah, this is it. But um, thank you very much for doing this. And as I say, I should look forward to seeing you. And, um, and um, yeah, I look forward to any books or new projects you've got coming. But um, good luck with all the um, stuff on packed lunch, etc. Thank you very much. And yeah, uh, yeah keep writing for Kitchen Garden and, um, and the news magazine. And the, the last bit of good news is you're slowly catching up Terry Walton on reads on my website for your, your own interview. <laughs> but you've got a little way to go to him. And I know that's it. I did say that to him, but he said, Oh, yeah, I need to sabotage him. Yeah, he said he's got a lot more followers online, though. On their Twitter, <laughs> that, that's a small thing, don't worry. But you're slowly catching out, my friend. You're getting there. Oh, yeah, you just brilliant. have to keep clicking on it all the time. Exactly. I'll just have to get one of these bots that just clicks it all the time. Yeah, or just put a link on somewhere saying, oh, you really need to go and look at this, please, please. But, um, <laughs> thanks very much for doing this. And I say, stay no safe. And um, hopefully speak to you in the future at some point again. Yeah, all right. Cheers, Rob. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this video, press the like button and also give us a comment to let us know what you're doing in the garden at the moment. And if you like our videos generally, it'd be really great if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel.